Now, in the interest of fairness here, there are a couple different ways of looking at or reviewing the new Star Wars animated show Resistance. First, you can judge it as something unto itself, or separate from anything and everything else Star Wars. In other words, we can just look at it as another cartoon airing on what is clearly a very kid-oriented channel. And by those standards, I can only guess that most young kids, whether they're Star Wars fans or not going into it, are probably going to enjoy this show. And if the intent of Disney and Lucasfilm with this show is to make something that is almost strictly for a younger crowd, then I think they have a winner on their hand in that respect. However, another way to look at Resistance is as the third series to come out in the modern era of Star Wars animation. And I say modern era because yes, there were two shows from some 30 years ago now, shows I watched as a kid and can say were not the best. Especially when compared to other shows of the time, such as Transformers or Voltron, which were personal favorites of mine. And those old Star Wars cartoons were, of course, droids and Ewoks. And for anybody who thinks Resistance is the worst thing that's ever happened to Star Wars animation, I would invite you to check out those shows because you'll most likely have your mind changed. Anyway, looking at and comparing Resistance to the other two shows of the modern era, those of course being The Clone Wars and Rebels, is also not entirely fair considering those shows had multiple seasons to grow and get better, whereas there's only been one episode of Resistance thus far, at least one that I've seen. I know there is another episode available online already, but to be honest, I'm not exactly eager to check it out, which is the problem with the show for me. It was kind of boring for a premiere episode. And when you compare it to the Clone Wars movie and or Spark of Rebellion, which was the first episode of Rebels, I'd say The Recruit, as the first episode of Resistance was called, was by far the weakest of the three. And that's saying something considering I didn't really enjoy the Clone Wars movie thanks in large part to Ahsoka, a character I started out hating though, one that grew on me and to the point now where she is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. The Clone Wars movie also didn't offer up the greatest of stories, even when compared to other episodes or arcs right in the first season. And the reason why I do consider the Clone Wars movie the first episode or episodes of that show is because they were just that, four episodes put together into a movie and released into theaters. And even though the Clone Wars movie wasn't the greatest, I still saw tons of potential there. And after seeing it in the theater, I was eager for the actual show to start on Cartoon Network. Same more or less goes for Rebels. After watching Spark of Rebellion, which I thought was actually quite good, I was eager for the rest of the show to get going, even though Ezra, the main character of that show, was probably the weakest part for me and remained as such throughout the entire series. In fact, the only times I found his character enjoyable was when he was interacting with Maul and during the final episode of the entire show. And it looks like Resistance is going to suffer from that very same problem, a main character that I really just don't care for all that much. Because of all the characters introduced in this first episode, I found Cass to easily be the goofiest, most annoying, and most cliche of the bunch. And I just can't understand why they needed to make him so over the top when he's actually supposed to be a well-trained graduate of the Academy and a pilot for the New Republic, one they even trusted with an important mission to retrieve and bring back some type of intel. And yes, I do realize the actual reason they made him that way is because this is a cartoon aimed at a younger crowd, and I guess apparently kids are supposed to like that type of slapstick behavior. Anyway, though I didn't like Kaz, none of the other characters really bothered me, though none really stood out to me either, whereas I immediately liked and was drawn to Kanan in the first episode of Rebels, and I also immediately liked the portrayals of Anakin and Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars, and the camaraderie that was shown between them that was mostly lacking in the movies. One thing I did like about Resistance, though, was all the different aliens we saw, and by that I mean both the total number and the variety of different species, both new and old. Cool aliens are one of the best parts of Star Wars, and I'm happy that this show seems to be embracing that. However, one thing I'm still disappointed about is the animation style, and yes, I know some people really enjoy this type of animation, and that's fine, but for me, it seems like we keep going backwards in terms of quality of animation in these Star Wars shows, because Clone Wars set the bar particularly high right out of the gate. Then Rebels came around and lowered it, but it still didn't look that bad and got better as time went on. And now Resistance is lowering that bar yet again, and that's disappointing considering the Star Wars franchise has always been about upping the bar, pushing boundaries and being the standard everyone else out there was looking to achieve. And that's the real reason I think a lot of fans are disappointed by this show. It's not that they want to sit here and judge and ridicule a cartoon of all things, and I know some out there will want to say that it's sad that so many adults are willing to criticize to death what, on the surface, just seems to be a kid's show. 
But the thing is, the last two animated series were not just kids' shows. They had a much broader appeal and have become an intricate part of the overall Star Wars experience, if you will. The amount of lore and expansion of the greatest story offered in both the Clone Wars and Rebels was incredible, invaluable even, and dwarfs what we've seen in the actual movies. And though Resistance certainly has the chance to do the same given time, and be a great way to flesh out the time period of the sequel trilogy, the package that information is coming in is not as good as what we've gotten in the past. At least not yet, because yes, there is obviously time for the show to get much, much better, and to give clarity to the bigger picture of this time period. And it really should get into the bigger picture when you consider it's called Resistance, and not Star Wars Racing League or something. Because calling it Resistance implies that the Resistance will of course be the focus of the show. And my hope right now is that the first season will be all about Kaz befriending his fellow racers, while we and he learns more about the threat of the First Order. And then by the end of the first season, or maybe sometime around the start of the second, the Aces, as these racers are known, will form an elite squadron for the Resistance in the wake of the events of Episodes 7 and 8, because apparently the first season of this show will overlap with the events of The Force Awakens. And if that is how it all plays out, I guess it could end up being a good show, though it sounds a lot like what Rebels was before it, where a group of friends joins a larger cause to stop or overthrow a greater threat. And honestly, from the setup we're getting right now, I really don't know where else this show can go other than that, unless there is some type of radical change or unexpected twist to come. Because I highly doubt it will remain centered on the whole racing league or this platform or the whole spy thing for very long, since, again, the show is called Resistance, and I'd imagine they'll eventually be the main focus of the entire show. And to now give you my very quick and candid review of the first episode here, I don't think the show was terrible, not by a long shot. It certainly could have been worse, and I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as that first dreadful trailer made it out to appear. And as I said at the start, I bet most kids out there enjoyed it, and if that's the case, then that's cool and I hope this show can bring the younger generation to the franchise. Perhaps, like it or not, Star Wars animation is going to more or less abandon the broad appeal approach, and target the younger audience specifically. And maybe if The Mandalorian is terrific when it comes out, I won't care quite so much. But from the perspective of someone who has been a big fan of the modern era of Star Wars animation, this show is a little disappointing right out of the gate. It just didn't grab me the same way Rebels did, for example, or have the excitement level and legacy characters to lure me in like The Clone Wars did. Yes, it could get better in time, but if it wasn't called Star Wars, I wouldn't be going back for more. And you can certainly take that as you will coming from someone who doesn't normally watch cartoons. In closing here, I don't want to judge the whole series based on just one episode, but if they were putting their best foot forward to impress us right at the start, then I have a bad feeling about this. No, I'm not giving up all hope just yet, and as I said, if the show is beloved by kids, then so be it I suppose, as long as The Mandalorian is good. But right now, I'm just thinking about how long we have to wait until Season 7 of The Clone Wars, and not about the next episode of Resistance, which, if I wanted to, I could watch right now. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you thought of the first episode of Resistance, so leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.